Hi there, this is Chris, Chapman the Cup Motor Legends. Today we're going to be talking about a new suit from our American cousins at Klim. It's a suit called the Kodiak 2 and it's brand new for 2021. Let's face it, over here in Europe, we kind of have an expectation that it'll be the European brands that are blazing a trail when it comes to the technical developments in the motorcycle apparel world. But I've got to say that Klim very much bucks that trend. Klim produce great gear. They are certainly very much the foremost name when it comes to adventure riding gear. So if we were to look around at any point in time, if we were to look around now, Rucker would have an adventure suit, how Vassas would have an adventure suit, Held would have one, Revit would have one, Dainese would have one. Everyone plays at it. But if you're looking at the top end of adventure riding, if you want the best of the best, Klim is the name that you'll end up at. And there are a number of reasons for that. One is that they use only the best fabrics. They do not cut corners on any of the gear that they produce. They always want to create the best gear they possibly can. So on their suits, they will use something like the super expensive super fabric material for abrasion resistance. When it comes to membranes, they'll only use Gore-Tex. Armour, throughout everything they make, it's got to be D3O. Their most recent new helmet, the Creos Pro. They use a material for the liner to replace the EPS that's called Coroid. It's super light, super energy absorbing. It is just amazing. And I think that demonstrates how Klim are always pushing the boundary, always trying to find new ways of doing things to create better gear for the end user. But I think that there's something more about Klim than just the materials and the products that they make. There's a line out in the marketing world that I see a lot when I'm looking at advertising for motorcycle clothing retailers and sometimes from motorcycle clothing manufacturers. And that line is made by bikers for bikers. Now, it's a cliche and I've got to say that it's just in most cases simply not true. And I think that it's the outpouring of lazy marketeers who are trying to find an easy way to imbue the brands that they represent with some kind of authority, some kind of authority or authenticity that often they don't have. The fact is that most brands out there never test their gear. They design it, they make it, it goes into production, they never ride in it on the road, and that's because most of them do not have enough people on their staff to, who actually can ride a bike. Now, Klim, of all the brands out there, they do not use this line. I have never, in any Klim marketing material, in their marketing collateral, I've never seen produced by Riders for Riders. But of all the brands out there, they are the brand who could use it with the greatest authenticity. These guys are the real deal. Almost all of them ride. And they go out and they test the gear. And I've seen this firsthand. You don't have to ride a bike to work at Klim, but it's considered to be a very strong plus point if you want to go and join them and they do all go out on mass they go out at weekends and they test the gear before it goes into production now ultimately klim is a commercial operation they're owned by uh, polaris and like all of us like every clothing manufacturer like every clothing retailer they have to make money but what i can tell you is that the guys based in the head office in the middle of that big field in idaho they're not so bothered about making profit they're bothered about developing great gear and that is what they do and it explains why they have, after only two years of this suit, which is the Kodiak 1, it explains why they have produced a new version, the Kodiak 2. Now, as we've said, Klim kind of owns the adventure market. But a few years ago, someone decided we want a slice of the touring market as well. The touring market is larger and more lucrative. The suit that they produced to do that was indeed this suit. This is the Kodiak I'm now going to call it the Kodiak 1. It, of course, at that time, it was just called the Kodiak. And it was a very credible effort. But in all honesty, if we look back now, we can see that it was just a stepping stone. And I'm sure Klim knew that. You don't go from one market to another and expect to get it bang on right with your first product. The problem with the Kodiak was that actually it ended up being neither one thing nor t'other. Having come out of an adventure market, that was what these guys knew. So this was still a bit of an adventure suit. Huge amount of venting, the kind of things, the features that you would expect on an adventure suit. They had made it a slimmer fit, they'd done things to make it more applicable for touring, but the end result was just, I've got to say, a little bit schizophrenic. It was neither one thing nor t'other. But 
Flim have learned from their experiences with the Kodiak, the Kodiak 1. For the Kodiak 2, the concept is identical. The concept is the same as it was when they did the 1. And it's basically a Badlands suit designed for the road. Now, the Badlands is the suit that sits at the heart, at the core of Klim. It's what they're all about. It's a fantastic suit, but it's too baggy. It just doesn't work on the road. So that was what the Kodiak was always about, a slimmed down Badlands for the road. That's what this was. This does the job much better because I've got to say, even though this didn't do a bad job, this is much more focused. This is the suit that we're now going to talk about in a little bit more detail. I am going to delve quite deeply into some of the details on this outfit, but let's just run through the top line, as it were. The fabric is a Gore-Tex Pro, a three-layer laminated pro shell. The suit is well vented like all of Klim suits. They come out of adventure riding where those vents are important, especially if you've got a suit that is laminated, you need to get as much air in as possible. So this is a well vented suit. Like any Klim outfit, it's got far too many pockets. That just seems to be one of Klim's things. Like the Kodiak one, we've got these leather patches on the shoulders, the armor is D3O and so on. So all of the things that we have seen on the Kodiak one are found here on the Kodiak two. Now, I have to say that I think that the fabric is a little bit lighter and the brief here on the Kodiak 2 we know was to make the Kodiak 2 much more comfortable than the Kodiak 1. They have not given us those numbers, but I would suspect that if this was an 850 denier fabric in the Kodiak 1, it is now something like a 750. It feels lighter, it feels easier, it feels more supple. One of the things that we that have changed on the Kodiak 2. On the Kodiak 1, we had gussets, stretch gussets behind the shoulders to enable the arms to move around to make it more comfortable. What we have here, we don't have gussets on the Kodiak 2. We have these large areas of stretch material underneath the arms. And I have to say they make, in my view, a great contribution. You put this jacket on, you can just move around it. It's funny how whenever one Whenever anyone comes in the shop and puts a jacket on, the first thing they do is that, as though they're going swimming in it. It's not really a valid test, but when you do that in this suit, it just feels a bit like the Navala. It just feels very comfortable, very cosseting. You get those same stretch panels. We'll come on and talk about the trousers later, but you get the same stretch panels in the crotch. Now, the leather here that I've mentioned, it's cut differently on the Kodiak 2. It's not particularly less comprehensive, but it's just cut in a way that doesn't make the shoulders feel as stiff. And the same with the elbows. It doesn't come perhaps quite as far down the forearm, but it's cut differently and it certainly, I think, aids comfort. There's another little factor that may sound silly, but I think it also makes a contribution to this jacket feeling nicer to wear. And it's to do with the Scotch light reflective material. Now on the Kodiak one, that was all on bands that were then sewn on top of the jacket. And when you get enough of those bands, they just add another layer, they add another layer of complexity and of stiffness to the jacket. But what we have here on the Kodiak 2, we've got some reflective bands here, but they're sewn into the material, not on top of the material, the material abuts them. We also have lots of reflective is printed in. So no two ways about it, that will make a little bit of a contribution. The bottom line is this is a supremely comfortable jacket. And I think that in almost every respect, it trumps the Kodiak 1 both on and off the bike. It would be an exaggeration to say that it's, cheek, that it's chalk versus cheese, sorry, but it is certainly a more comfortable jacket to wear. So now what I want to do, I want to go into the detail in a little bit, um, in a little bit greater depth. As I've mentioned, the outer fabric is a Gore-Tex Pro shell that's laminated. It's a three layer laminate. There's nothing more waterproof. You can't do better than that. Importantly, however, these stretch panels under the arm, they are also Gore-Tex panels. So even though they're there for a particular purpose, which is articulation, they are not going to be a weak point for ingress of water. Now, vents. Vents with many suits are a weak point for ingress. I have to say, however, that it's not been a point of contention with the Kodiak 1. I don't think we've had a single Kodiak 1 back with a vent that leaks. So that's not really an issue. But what we have here on this suit we've got one set of vents less. So what we had on the Kodiak 1, we had a big vent that ran up the side here of the flanks. For various reasons, they can't have that, and I'll come on and discuss why, but all the other vents are here. And certainly this suit, whilst it has 
less vents than, or this one has less vents than the previous version. It's still got more vents than you'll find on any of its competitors from Rucker, Halvarsons, and so on. So what you've got, you've got two vents here on the chest. You've got two on the biceps here. You've got two on the forearms and you've got two large exhaust vents that run down behind the shoulders. Now, last year, the, all the vents had aqua seal zips and they are known to be very waterproof zips. This suit does not have aqua seal zips. They actually have a, a waterproof come water um, repellent zip. It's the same one that is used by Rucker on the Nivala. So it does not leak. And I do not believe that they have changed zips just to save money. I think they've done it again because these zips are just more pliable. It makes the suit a little bit easier to wear. In terms of the zip on the front of the jacket, this is the same zip that we had on last year's and the year before's iteration. It's not per se a waterproof zip, but what you've got, you've got two flaps here, two storm flaps. Any water that gets in here will run down the channel and come out the bottom of the suit. So in that respect, this is exactly the same as last year's suit. Let's talk about the Kodiak 2 as an item of protective wear, as it were. Already mentioned the leather panels. These are goatskin leather on the shoulders and the elbows. They're there for extra abrasion resistance if you do end up going down the road. Throughout the suit, the armor is D3O and it's level 2 D3O, including in the back. Now, one thing that you don't get with the Kodiak 2 that you did get with the Kodiak 1 was a lumber belt. And on one level, that's a bit of a shame. I particularly appreciate a lumber belt if you find yourself doing long tracks of auto route on the continent and if you've got a lower back then that lumber belt just helps to tighten things up. I think it's also useful if you're doing quite strenuous stuff off-road. This suit is equipped, it's got the slots that enable you to put that belt in but it's now only available as an added extra as it were. Chest protector. Now this is just a little bit of an anomaly. This existed on the Kodiak one as well. Now we're going to forgive Klim because they're an American company and they're probably not quite so well versed in the nuances of the legislation as those guys who operate over here are. But in a suit, if something purports to offer protection, it has to be CE approved. And these pads are not CE approved. They would have to be EN1621 accredited and they're not. So these are really nothing more than comfort pads. They're not going to do any harm if you were to come off or hit it. It's got to provide something, but technically they are not protectors. The best use I can see of them would be that if you've got maybe a Krieger backpack that you've got on where it attaches over the chest, it might make that more comfortable. But really, we cannot technically look at those as protectors. Let's look at some of the other detail, because as they say, the devil is in the detail. And at times, those details can make quite a bit of difference as to how easy it is to live with the jacket. So in terms of pockets, we've got two pockets here, Napoleon pockets here, two zip pockets at the bottom as well. We've got a what's called a utility pocket here and then we've got a little pocket on the forearm. We've got four internal pockets and a hidden passport pocket. I would love to tell you where that is but I can't. You'll have to discover that if you buy the suit. <clears throat> In terms of adjusters, there's an elasticated adjuster that goes around the hem. You can get access to that via the pocket and that just means that you can tighten it up, stop it flapping around and so on. You've got this little hook that enables you to hook this back, hook the collar back. So if you're riding in very hot weather, that just allows a draft to get in without the collar flapping to and fro in the wind. You've got a connecting zip that enables this to be connected to the pants. The jacket itself has got a mesh lining. You've also got for the first time on a Klim outfit, I've never seen one before. This is a Gore-Tex storm collar. We all know how useful they are over here in the cold weather. It unzips, so in the summer you would take it off, but that's a nice little touch, something new. In terms of comfort adjusters, well, Klim tell us that the, knuck, the neck is adjustable, and I'm not saying they're taking the mickey, but it's a bit of Velcro. I'm not sure that I would really come, uh, I would not really consider that to be an adjuster. It's just, as I say, a bit of Velcro. But you do have adjusters here on the biceps and on the forearms. The big difference though, the thing that we really think has moved forward with this jacket, and it's one of the things that we so love about jackets like the Halvarsons Veen, is we've got these side adjusters, these elasticated side adjusters, and they make so much difference. It means that you can 
gives the jacket more volume if you want to put extra layers on it but if you are riding in the summer and you don't want it flapping in the wind you can tighten it up so they make such a big difference they will also help this suit fit a wider range of sizes because if you are a little bit on the slimmer side you might just want to tighten it however if you've got a bit of a tummy on you you just let it out and that will enable the jacket to fit you again more comfortably i think that's a major improvement there's one other thing that we are quite excited about and we even think that we might have had a contribution towards this because we mentioned it when we saw them when we last spoke to them about the Kodiak one. I'm sure other people did so we can't claim it's down to us but one of the problems with the Kodiak one and it's a feature of Klim suits they have not had zips and adjusters on the sleeves and I think that's because they come from an adventure riding world. Now when you're riding hard off-road and you're riding in hot weather and so on you don't need to be able to open the sleeve. In fact, what you want is air to go up the sleeve. So no Klim suit before now has had adjusters at the end of the cuffs. But if you want to be taken seriously as a player with a touring and commuting suit, you need to have this facility. So obviously that opens up, you do it down, you then tighten this bit of Velcro to cinch it up to stop any water coming in and obviously to stop any cold air. However, I've left the best upgrade of the Kodiak 2 to last. Now, Klim have been known forever for what are called shell suits. In other words, you buy them as they are, whatever thermals you want to put underneath, be it merino or a duvet jacket or electric, you go and supply your own. But I think that they have taken the view that that really doesn't pass muster. The theory of it does, but when you are trying to compare yourself with the best from Rucker, Halvars and Stadler, all those other brands, you've got to play the game. You need to have some kind of thermal lining. And with the thermal lining in this, I think they have done a cracking job. It's this. It's a jacket that we've reviewed elsewhere. It's called the Maverick. And it is a fantastic jacket. It is similar in some ways to the Rucker Down X and Bellstaff have a similar one as well. It is made with 90% goose down, 10% goose feathers. It's what's called an 800 fill power. Now, unless you're really into your mountaineering gear, that won't mean a lot. You can have 500, 600, 800. You can have as much as 1,000. But the problem is, as you go up to 1,000, it becomes just too bulky. If you were climbing Everest, you would have 1,000 fill power and you would have, have a lot of it. It's quite a complicated set of um, calculations because not only have you got the fill power which is a measure of the thermal properties of the down you've then got the volume of it all I can say is that I have been wearing this particular jacket I nicked it from this I've worn it for the last month or so I think it's fantastic it wears really well as a street jacket and it's going to provide an excellent level of warmth within this so I think that is another indication that Klim really have set two with the Kodiak 2 they have made us a fantastic jacket. So normally when somebody puts a review together for a technical suit like this they'll put all of their comments, their observations, their explanations into the jacket and then suddenly the trousers will come along as some kind of afterthought. Well we're not one to break with tradition so no exceptions here we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to talk through the pants as briefly as we can and I think that's reasonably legitimate and acceptable because in some ways the pants are identical to the jacket in terms of the way it's put together, the materials used and so on. So the fabric of the trousers, it's a three layer laminated Gore-Tex Pro shell. You get the same goat skin leather on the knees. You get D3 O armor in the knees and the hips. Fronts, front, sorry, vents, front and back. So that's a vent. And then there's an exhaust vent on the back. Pockets either side. Adjusters, you've got an adjuster mechanism here, a Velcro adjuster mechanism at the waist you've also got a volume adjuster around the lower part of the leg you've got the same stretch material in the crotch area you've got a fairly wide opening leg so even though this is not an adventure suit per se this is a certainly a suit that you could wear with a crossover adventure boot you've got a connecting zip that will connect this to the jacket as you would expect but the trousers also come with braces because if once you're off the bike, if you want to disconnect, you don't want your trousers falling down. So these pants come not only with a zip, but they come with braces as well. The trousers do not come with the, an equivalent of the Maverick jacket that you get in the top half. I don't think we're that surprised with that. The Rucker Nivala has its down necks in top and bottoms, but in our experience, not many people use the bottom half because that's 
too much on most occasions. This is where we feel the cold. This is where we get the wind chill. This is what we want to keep warm. We want to keep the core warm. So most people, even if they've got a Navala, will make do with something like a Merino legging for the bottom half. So I think that that is perfectly acceptable. It does not surprise me. Now, as we would expect, this trouser comes in three different leg lengths, and I think that is crucially important at this end of the market. And I make this point because our friends at Hal Varsons this year have brought out a new adventure suit, and it comes in only one leg length, and I just don't think that's acceptable. A suit like this, you're paying this kind of money, it's got to fit. Nobody wants a trouser that's too short or too long, so you've got to have three leg lengths. So where do we come to? What are our conclusions about this suit? Well. We think it's no longer, it sounds rude and I'm not wanting to be rude, but I think in some ways the first iteration of the Kodiak, the Kodiak 1, was still an adventure suit masquerading as a road suit. This is a proper road suit. It's a match now for anything on the market, be it Rucker, Stadler, Bellstaff, Halvarsons. And at just over two grand, I think to top and bottom together is 2050, it has to compete with the very best. And I think it does. It's a super comfy outfit. Whether it's comfier than the Nivala, that's going to be a matter for personal taste, but these bits under the arms certainly aid to this being a very comfortable suit. What it has over the Nivala, for example, is much better venting, so you're going to have to try them on and see. However, and it's a big however, I've got to come to one point that cannot be, I'm afraid, avoided. It is the elephant in the room. This jacket is rated under EN 17092 as an A jacket, not at double A, which is where we would expect this to be, where every other jacket that this might be compared to sits. And when we first heard this a few weeks ago, we were pretty devastated. It wasn't the plan that this would be an A suit. It was planned to be a double A suit. And on one level, one can only conclude that to be in the market with a £2,000 suit at the highest end that is only rated single A, on one level that just isn't good enough. But Klim has explained to us what's happened and we can understand. And actually I don't think it's quite the big deal that we thought it was when we first heard about it. The culprit is these stretch panels. So these stretch panels under the arm. Now when Klim put this suit together, they had not really understood that this was still in a fairly sensitive zone. There are three areas, and Graham's going to put a map on screen to show you the zoning of the body. There's red, there's green and yellow. And they had expected that this area under the arms, which is going to be an area where you would not expect to have a slide down the road, they had expected those areas to be green. Actually, part of the cut of this underarm panel falls into the yellow area, and therefore, in that one area, this suit gets rated as an A suit, not a double A suit, and that brings the whole suit down. So it's a real shame. And you're going to have to say, how much am I bothered about that? If you're someone who just fixes or fixates on the technical specification, you just won't go for this suit. But I think I could put forward a case that says this is an amazing suit in every other respect. It does everything you would ever want it to do. And in pretty much every area, I think it's as good as any suit on the market when it comes to protection. You've got the D3O armor, you've got the leather panels and so on. You've got this one area under the arms, but you have to ask yourself, how likely is it that I'm ever gonna go down the road and slide with this bit along the road surface? It's gotta be said, it's a possibility. Same with the crotch. Are you ever gonna be sliding along the road in this area? If you are, I think you've got bigger problems, but that is something that we cannot legislate for. You're gonna to have to decide whether this one area that transforms this from a double A suit to a single A suit, whether that means a lot to you. All we can say is, it's a shame. Klim are not going to change this in the short term. They tell us that this suit is gonna have a three year life cycle. So it's not a matter of them putting it right next year. This suit will be an A rated suit for the coming years. You're gonna to have to make up your own mind. One little point I wanted to make about the Kodiak 2. We've shown it, we've done the review on a blue one. That was the only one that Klim had available to send us. It's gonna be available in blue and in black. In fact, we are going to be concentrating on the black version. So blue will be available. We'll be able to get it by special order. Probably gonna take a couple of days if you wanted one. 
Anyway, if you'd like to see more Klim gear, then visit the website motolegends.com. If you'd like to learn more about the Kodiak 2 in particular, then if you click on one of the links on the screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there, that will take you directly to the relevant page on the website. There you can check out the spec in a little bit more detail, you can check availability, and if you really like the suit, obviously you can buy it there and then. When you do buy from us, we try to make the process as simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free, and what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. We have the best price promise in the business. Now, John Lewis was rightly famed for its never knownly undersold price promise. We actually go one stage better. If you can find anyone selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that competitor's price by a full 10%. If the competitor is in the EU and not in the UK, we will match their landed price. Now, there are a few terms and conditions associated with the price beat, nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to price beat us, I suggest you visit the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. In future, if you'd like to receive bulletins from us about new product releases, then if you go to the website, top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up. Click on there, within seconds you'll be in business, in future you'll receive email bulletins from us. If, however, you would prefer to get your information videographically, that is to say, in this form, we would be simply delighted if you want to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Now, this is 2021. Last year, 2020, we gave away to one of our YouTube subscribers a Mutt 125cc machine disguised as a Steve McQueen desert sled. Well, this year, 2021, we are upping the game a wee bit. We're going to be giving away a Fantic 250cc Caballero Scrambler bike but we're not going to be giving it away to a YouTube subscriber, but rather to someone who follows us on Facebook. So if you want to stand a chance of winning this fabulous little bike, go to our Facebook page and obviously follow us. We'll be giving the bike away, by the way, just before Christmas. I'd like to finish off with a play for our fabulous little shop here at Motor Legends. We are based about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. And as I say, it's a small shop, it's got a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse where we have more than two million pounds worth of stock arranged over three floors. And technically that makes this the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we actually believe that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We're all about service, we're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out and visit Trustpilot, we've got the highest five-star ranking in the business. When you come to see us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian Illy coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might just get to sample one of Sean's mum's delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. Talk again soon.